And Madden here with Suetonia for this final match of day one of the EVNT Championship Minor Leagues, watching Burnt or Burnt Out versus Pravi Shots. Um, Going to be a great match, I think, with some Ravens and some Rifters. Uh, Suetonia, what do you think? Yeah, there's some really interesting ships here. Nice to see the Rifter and the Raven. Uh, Ra I think this is the first time the Raven has been available. First time it has not been banned. Uh, I could be wrong on that though. Uh, the uh, Providence team have come in about 30 from a beacon. And uh, Burnt Out have come 50. But they've come from like adjacent beacons almost. So they're actually pretty close to each other. I don't think there's... I think they're only about 50 away from each other. So uh, this is a bit of an advantage to the Providence team, I think. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're definitely right. Um, given the the kind of range preference of a lot of the birds out team, um, I think that private shots has an advantage just given the angle. But it's it's not a significant one. Um, you know, you, they're still not going to have like a great screening opportunity for the auger, which I think is really key for their long term survival. So I'll be interested to see um, if that auger gets tackled, um, if that algos or the caracal just kind of disappears. Um, that initial primary is going to be fun to watch. I, I I hope to see we get one primary ship. I think a lot of the times people have been primarying multiple ships, and I, I have not loved that. So I hope we see one ship get primaried on both sides, and I think that'll make for a really exciting match here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the Burnout team can break uh, Providence Ogre. I think they can. Uh, the Oracle Raven and Caracal is a lot of deep, so there's like 1.8k there, if it all fully applies, of course. Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely be watching that uh, attack bar to see um, what DPS they get on and how much of it is actually hitting. Um, that's going to be fun. To, I mean, that's going to be interesting. But you do notice, probably shots, uh, that defense bar is, what, uh, at least two-thirds or about a third bigger um, than Burnt Out. So that's that's an interesting note uh, on this one. Yeah, they do have control and almost the same attack bar, of course, Burnt Out uh, Applying that a lot further away because of the DPS is from the course and the Rifter, which have to be close range. So going for the Harbinger first, kind of interesting uh, for Burnout and understand Oracle that at all. taking damage for the uh, burn for, from Prover shots. The Rifter is going down and trying to go around, while the course is going up and down, which is uh, a, a weird mix. And they got the Algos and the Punisher both coming in. Um, some armor, a lot of armor bots on the fields. I'm proud of that. Go armor bots. That Algos is going to disappear almost instantly. That's disappointing. Goodbye, Algos. I miss you. Yeah, that's Already. interesting. I didn't that. expect to burn out to lose a ship so far. I thought the Providence would lose their ship first. Interesting is that the Rifter is kind of holding up. I thought he would just be annihilated. How is that Rifter not dead? Yeah, I mean, there's, there should be a rapid like Caracal shooting him and potentially an Oracle that's untackled that should be able to deflection part against his web since he's webbed. But that who Algos knows? The right Harbinger in. is really low, though. That was... Just, I don't get that. Yeah, the Harbinger, I think, might die, which is amazing. But the Punisher is going to die, too. And then the Oracle is going to go next, probably. Yeah, <laughs> Providence always uh, like to prove us wrong. As, as the Punisher drops into hole, and the Oracle will be going down pretty soon. I think it's just the Raven uh, with red bots on him. Uh, uh, the I Caracol so already has, like, 10, 10 meters cubed, so he's only going to have, like, two light armor bots if he has those. Do you understand why they chose the Harbinger as their primary? I have so many questions about that. As it does die, uh, two minutes in and two ships in. I mean, the any Harbinger logic. is going to take full damage from cruise missiles and from the Oracle. So it's kind of like a safe primary. Maybe they're worried about the Augur mitigating too much damage. But why not pick, like, the Rifter or the Carissor? I mean, they came in, so they're close. You can hit them with uh, the Raven missiles if they're close. And they just sent their Algos to die. I mean, the Algos burned right in and just disappeared like it was never there as the Oracle yeah, that, now dies. But... Yeah, good rip, Blue Melon, got tackled by the Rifter. Now it's just Raven and Caracal versus the, the world, essentially. <laughs> well, not the world. They did kill the, the Harbinger. You know, if they could take out uh, the Rifter and the Corsair. I mean, the Raven has a lot of tank, no doubt about it. It's not over, but it's, it's like, I don't know how they're going to apply that DPS in a Raven without any tackle or secondary capabilities like target painters. It's going to be pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, he might die. I'm not sure if the Caracal is shooting him right now. But I, I think they can only really kill anything uh, uh, while the Caracal has uh, Rapid Lights, which is not going to bode very well. Maybe they kill the Rifter, then they're going to lose the Caracal by then. Yeah, I mean, and also, I mean, just to note, they've been shooting uh, essentially two or three ships the entire match, which I did not like. I stand behind disliking. 
Um, you know, private shots did it a little bit because, you know, burned out like through their entire team um, at them. So I kind of get that, you know, as, as we tar- talked about before, targets of opportunity are fantastic. And taking out that Algos was really, really, really smart. You know, the Alliance tournament, a thing that you always have struggled with is they burned into me. What do I do? And responding to that is critical. And I think probably did a great job of that. But at the same time, you know, burnt out, shot everything and killed essentially nothing. Yeah, I mean, they, they killed the Harbinger, but I'm not sure if it was the best primary here. I definitely would have focused on the Orgo, of course, or the Rifter instead. Uh, the Kappa is down dies. now, so it's not just Raven versus the remaining four ships. Nothing has really changed, so I think Providence have got this, and uh, Danko 1001 are going to die just a, a slow, agonizing death. Yeah, I think we really have to give a great shout-out to, to Pravi here. First of all, uh, for going Amar, mostly, but then, more importantly, for bringing a Rifter. You know, if you're going to go Amar, that's cool, but if you're going to bring a Rifter, that's awesome. So I'm proud of them. And, you know, I noticed Twitch Rat, a couple people talking about uh, the Raven, you know, it's going to live a long time. So we're going to have some opportunities for some good commentary here. Because that Raven, you know, it's got XLASB. It's super cool. I love the Raven in this comp. I actually like the comp a lot. I think we're going to see it again. And I think it may do uh, a bit better um, in another opportunity. So we'll see about that. Um, and Danko has certain... just been tackled by that Rift and now... Uh... D- denying him the chance of probably boundary violating, which is what he was probably hoping to do. That's devastating. I always love to see a good boundary violation. He's at 97 kilometers. I mean, like, Rifter, let him go. Let him be free. I mean, you know, this is Thunderdome. If we're going to do one thing here, it's it's have fun. And boundary violations are fun. Yeah, I mean, especially when Doom Chinchilla's on your screen, on your team, so he ends up breaking a keyboard when you do boundary violate. Like, if any team was going to boundary violate, this is the team that really had the shot. And and I think I think we're being wronged uh, for the loss of the opportunity to watch him boundary violate as he gets to 102, but now at 100 meters a second, I don't I don't think he's gonna make it. Um, a devastating a devastating factor. Oh, can he make it? <laughs> he might. Danko might be able to get out the arena. I I I, I hope he can. I I really really hope he can. Um, but the you know look you know props props to burnout. They they you know they play with the band tools. You know, they, they didn't have a chance uh, at a Logi, or maybe they did, and they just chose against it. Uh, I can't quite remember now. But still, you know, they went logi list. Props to them for that. But Bravi Shots brought a Rifter, and I, I think that decided the match. Before we even really got going, I think a Rifter was chosen, and the team that chose the Rifter had the victory. I, and I just don't think we give them enough credit for that uh, ballsy choice. Hey, it's true. The Rifter has a 100% win rate right now. Yeah, like people are sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know if I've got this. I don't know what I got to do. No, just bring a Rifter. Instant victory uh, is almost assured. As I will note, the Dogger is low in armor, so good for him. Yeah, it seems good like the Raven. the Raven is slowly breaking him. I guess his medium and series is probably on reload right now. Uh, so yeah, I don't think the Avalon's like... hitting him very well, so I think that's a big part of this. Although he is now almost in armor. Although I'm not sure he might have reloaded by now. It's been so long. Oh no, definitely not because he's using no. I chargers. think he is. I think he is repping. I'm not sure if it's rep drones or not, or if it's just like uh, he can't like have a, rep drones um, on himself. There's no way. No, but the uh, the abaddon and the uh, hub. Uh, well, the, the hub is dead, but the abaddon could have maybe rep drones on him, or he could just be using like an off spec uh, medium and up just running it with no charges. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. No, I, I mean, I think, I mean, there's a lot of armor drones in the field, which I, again, I stand behind that the armor drones are really powerful. You know, the Algos running right in clearly uh, was not uh, as effective as armor drones, uh, I think, could have been if the Algos had played back, maybe played a screening role with some, some powerful reps, you know, I think it was talked about in the previous match. I think that's a, that's a good opportunity. I will say, this Raven, you know, three minutes to go in this match, it's been seven minutes, he's at 117, and he's got a lot of shields. I really think, and I think this is the most important thing we're going to see all day, he can boundary violate. He might also win if he just doesn't die for some magical reason, and I don't understand how he would do it, but he could win. So, But more importantly, he can boundary violate. So I, I mean, really he, hope he does. He, he, he could roleplay a uh, NC.Drake and just sit 124 kilometers from the boundary and hope that uh, that probably shots just, uh, you know, all boundary violate. Yeah, I mean, you see the Abaddon now burning right at him, so maybe he's trying to trick the Abaddon uh, into burning at him and then magically kill the Abaddon you know, which would also be hilarious. I mean, legitimately, probably the funniest thing we'll see all day is if that Abaddon dies. But the Ravens are armor now, which is very disappointing because we still got two more mines, and I want to see reverse tie-dye. Just so you guys know, if this match goes over, 
we would get reverse tie. So stay alive, Raven. At least boundary violate. Although it's it's at 18 meters a second, so probably won't be succeeding in that goal. Well, we won't get reverse tie because uh, probably you're winning on points. Oh, good point. But uh, uh, <laughs> Will Dan could be able to boundary violate before he gets <laughs> killed. He's going to have to go a lot faster than this, Deku. This is not how you boundary violate. Very disappointing, 122. But uh, Augur is in structure, so he did a good job at almost dying. All right, and with that, Raven goes down. We take it back to the studio for one more time. 